from the American Academy of Pediatrics. I have so many shining moments I will remember from the 2023 National Conference and Exhibition in D.C., but only one involves wearing a crown. Joanna, I think we donned the same bejeweled tiara walking around the convention center. I know those crown jewels belong to Dr. America, who is now Dr. World. But to be honest with you, I didn't know we crowned doctors with anything but bouffant caps in the OR. I have a lot of questions, David, and today we are hosting a special series of Pediatrics on Call. Welcome to Pathways to Pediatrics. I'm Dr. Joanna Pargablanki. And I'm Dr. David Hill. In Pathways to Pediatrics, we get to meet people in our profession and find out how they got to and through pediatrics. It's our way of shining light on the achievements of others and offering some inspiration. For today's podcast, we are going to interview Dr. Haley Nelson. Dr. Nelson is a complex care pediatrician and lactation consultant at Valley Children's Healthcare in Madera, California. In 2021, she entered a beauty and brains pageant and was crowned Dr. America, and since then has ascended the throne to become Dr. World. Dr. Nelson, Dr. World, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Your crown is brilliant, and I am so happy it is sitting right behind you as we are recording this. I was hoping you'd be wearing it, but I know it must be hard to put on with headphones. (laughs) It doesn't fit with the headset, but it comes with me everywhere in its case, and it really is. It's a conversation starter, and it helps open doors sometimes to be able to help children. I want to get more into that, but before we talk about you being Dr. World, we liken Pathways to Pediatrics to start at the beginning of your journey Were you a child pageant star? I was not. There was no toddlers and tiaras. I have no prior pageant experience. This was a pandemic move um, that I took out of... I just got inspired and decided, hey, maybe I could try this thing with zero experience um, and saw a novelty there and decided to jump. And speaking of the past, what made you decide to become a pediatrician? Was it the glamour... I always wanted to help people, but even going back, my mom tells a story. I was three years old. I had the pigtails, the pink footed pajamas, and I told my parents I was going to grow up and either be a doctor or an elephant. And <laughs> it is a true story. They will not let me live it down. Um, sometimes they buy me elephant things, and uh, it has persisted that I always knew. Um, but if I would have picked during medical school, it wasn't necessarily my peds rotation. But for some reason, I just, peds was where my heart was at, and I'm so grateful that I ended up here. Interestingly, I almost specialized in elephant. <laughs> yes, and we're happy you went down the uh, human professions route instead of the (laughs) elephant route. Um, So let's get back to your practicing pediatrics in California. It's the pandemic. And you hear about a beauty pageant that is just for doctors. I mean, who tells you about this and what makes you think this is something I need to compete in with no prior experience? Right. So I was doing the whole social media scrolling, saw Dr. I think she was Dr. Virginia at the time or Dr. USA, but she had entered her children into the COVID vaccine trials. So here's this woman standing there in her scrubs, crown and sash, talking about her children being in the COVID trials. And it caught my eye. At the same time, I was like, oh, what things can I do to help kids? And so knowing that that caught my attention, I work with our Safe Kids Central California Coalition to provide injury prevention. And when the world shut down, so did school assemblies. There was no stop, drop, and roll. There was no fitting kids for car seats. Like all of that stopped. And we had talked about, well, maybe we should jump on Facebook and do these Lunch and Learn series. And so at the same time, I'd heard about the pageant. I was like, Maybe people will tune in. I don't really know what I'm doing, but let's try it. And so that's kind of what I did. I just jumped in and figured I'd figure it out as I went. Well, clearly you did figure it out. Now, I've never spent a lot of time watching Miss America or Miss Universe, but I've seen clips of beauty pageant participants on stage having to answer questions about geopolitical issues or perform on the piano. Is that what you did during the competition? Can you walk us through this pageant experience? 
Yeah. So it really is because smart is beautiful. And so you get to highlight your career. So instead of tap dancing on stage like Miss America, I did a field presentation talking about being a doctor and who I wanted to help and why injury prevention was important. So I just got to share what I do. Yes, we do get to do evening gowns. So that's, you know, the fun sparkle piece, but it really comes down to, you know, the judge's interview and sharing how you're going to use that crown with a purpose. I'm picturing you on a stage in a gown presenting a PowerPoint. You know, is it a PowerPoint presentation? <laughs> like, what do they I, expect no. from doctors on stage? No, they, I don't have a PowerPoint. You have to have a platform. And so really that why. And so my platform is stay safe and be well. It really includes injury prevention, but also then illness prevention and wellness. I wanted to keep it broad so that I could talk about all things pediatrics, but certainly injury prevention is near and dear because children, that's the number one cause of death for children worldwide. And so we really, there's a lot of work that we can do to help educate families. And as a parent, I know that it's hard. So I want to be that voice and that message. And what does pageantry have to do with medicine and pediatrics? Are there parallels that can be drawn between these two competitive disciplines? There are. It's it's incredible. So that whole on stage question, I studied and I watched these different YouTube videos on how to win a pageant, how to do on stage question, but it helped me prepare in addition to doing the AAP media training for then becoming a spokesperson for the American Academy of Pediatrics and being able to do all of these things that I figured out how to develop those sound bites. How do I get that information out there? So when I catch your attention with my crown, I'm going to follow up and make sure that that message is important and relevant and get straight to the heart of things. You know, I think some people listening may be inspired by your story. If other pediatricians wanted to become Dr. Beauty Pageant Queens, what steps would they take to, to get in the running? So Dr. World Productions is the organization that hosts not only the doctor pageant, but also we have an achievement pageant. So if you have a medical assistant or someone else that you know who has a degree of some kind who is interested in using their voice and having some sparkle, they can certainly go to the website or go to the Facebook page to find out more. And you already talked about competing with the mantra, stay safe, be well. How do you feel like being on this platform as Dr. World has helped expand the audience that you were, that you're reaching outside of California? Yeah, it's been absolutely incredible. So I started off with our Facebook Lunch and Learn series for Safe Kids Central California, and I had promised them six episodes. Season one, we wrapped 37 episodes later. We started producing them in Spanish. I do not speak Spanish. So then I was mentoring my residents. They were um, doing those episodes for me. So I then put on the producer hat. We got grant funding. So now we have professionally filmed videos. And funny thing on that one is that people ask, oh, it's a beauty pageant. You walk around in a swimsuit. Well, no, I'm a doctor. Like I was in my scrubs. But then we got the money for these grants. And one of them is pool safety. So there is a video of me out there in a swimsuit <laughs> talking about water safety. <laughs> okay. Asking for a friend, any chance for men to get involved in this pageant process? I'm sure there's one out there. The thing that I've learned about pageantry is there's a place for everyone if it's something that you're at all interested in. Dr. World Productions is for um, females. And if people want to watch this, where do they turn to? Kind of what resources would they need to be looking at? Yeah, so the pageant occurred during the weekend that we were all at AAP. So I met Dr. David Hill and I was like, oh my goodness, I've met him. And he was like, okay, good luck tomorrow. And then I'm like, oh, no pressure. And it was live streamed on Facebook. So I was at my hotel room in Washington, D.C. in between talks to be able to interview with the judges and then find out whether or not I won. You know, uh, this is a, a funny statistic, but every single person that I wished good luck to at the 2023 NCE who was competing in the Dr. World pageant won. There you go. Well, thank you for being my good luck charm. We'll add you to my list of people who have helped me along the way from my glamager to, oh, this one time, you guys will like this story. I actually had to hire a pitching coach. Hmm. So... In, oh, wow. in being Dr. America and now as Dr. World, I get invited places that you may not go as a pediatrician. And one of those was to throw the opening pitch at a baseball game. I, of course, said yes, because I thought, 
well, this is cool. I've never done that before, but realized I didn't know how to throw a ball. So, <laughs> so I hire a pitching coach who makes me like learn the breakdown of how you throw so that I don't go viral for the wrong reasons. And then when I actually went to throw the pitch, I invited the Down Syndrome Association with me. So I brought all of the patients onto the field and got to share that moment with them. Wow. I can just picture that. Do you have any other fun stories about wearing the crown? Fun stories. I was making you guys a list of like, who have I met as Dr. You know, America and now Dr. World. So celebrities that I got to meet back when I was Dr. California America, I met Mario Lopez at the Garlic Festival. <laughs> Jennifer Garner actually uh, did a Zoom call during the pandemic with our hospital and my daughter was there and she wished her a happy birthday. And then I attended Comic-Con in LA with Project Wish Upon a Star by nominating my patient. I told them if she goes... Like her pediatrician's going with her. So I went down to LA, escorted my patient, and she got to meet Zachary Levi. He's the actor who plays Shazam. And it was huh. one of those moments that was just incredible. There's a long line of people waiting to see him. And we're off to the side. It had been a long day. Her legs are tired. So she sits down on the floor. So I sit down next to her and we've got her parents and the rest of our crew behind us. Zachary Levi comes up ready to talk to us. You know, his, his agent has pointed him in our direction and she can't stand up. Like her legs are done. So what does he do? He sits down on the floor with us and we were just in that bubble. The three of us, there were hundreds of people staring at the fact that he's talking to us and she was the only person who mattered. And I'm sitting there in my crown and sash explaining who she is, why we're here. And, and he was just real. And he was one of those cool people who understood to, to take it slower and that with someone with autism that you just got to give them time to warm up. And, and he did that and created that magical moment for her. Wow. So, Ailey, you've mentioned your kids a couple of times. Do you mind telling us about your family? About my family? So I have three kids. I have my son, Brenton, who is 12. Dorothy is 10. And then Daphne will be five in two weeks. Um, and I had my children at different stages of my medical training. So my son was born as a fourth year medical student. I looked at the calendar and I was like, okay, if I wanna have elective time off and have a baby, he needs to be born in September before the ARAS application opens and then I've gotta be able to travel for interviews. And so his birthday is in September, he behaved and we continued on our way. So that was my med school elective. And then in residency, I had Dorothy and got to experience what it was like to juggle being a parent and having a newborn and residency. And then Daphne came along as, you know, I was finally in attending. So I've got to experience it along the way and love being a mommy. And now that you're going to be doing time as Dr. World, what does your schedule look like? And how will you be kind of negotiating your family time with your doctor time with your Dr. World time? Right. I, that's that's a great question for how do I possibly juggle all of this? Um, it's not easy. So I am working full time as a pediatrician here at the hospital. I do our resident clinic. I have a bunch of different electives that I run as well. And then the crown stuff is extra. So that is my evenings and weekends, special events that I get invited to, whether it's emceeing a gala, going to donate blood in a ball gown. I am constantly on the go with that. Sometimes my kids get to come along with me, which is fun. Um, and I try to make sure that I reserve time for them as well. So scheduling that special time, making sure that they get mom too is important to me. So there's no required travel because it's Dr. World. Are you going to be leaving California and where will you be going? So it really is a choose your own adventure. I got to present this summer at the Safe Kids Worldwide Conference and did a poster on what I've accomplished. And it was a crown with a purpose, a novel approach to injury prevention and healthcare. And I shared how we increased our followers, how I increased the reach, all of the work that we've been doing in this next year, working on setting up a mission trip with a more relief. They're a nonprofit located here in Fresno. They have a wellness center in Mendota, California that I I give time to help with food distribution and different things. And one of the things that really drew me in for them is that they also work for this hospital in Afghanistan. 
when I was the MC for their gala, they're doing the fundraising and people are raising their paddles and they're, you know, that, that fun gala experience, but it was all for what things were needed. And so when it came up to CPAP machines, they wanted two CPAPs for the NICU in Afghanistan. And the crowd, people just got invested and they raised enough money for six. And I just had goosebumps. I know what that means to save lives in halfway around the world. And now I'm going to be training the team halfway around the world and getting to travel and actually help implement pediatric protocols for that hospital. That's incredible. And I have a sort of awkward question because what you're doing costs money. Does the Dr. World organization pay for all of this? Is there funding? (laughs) <laughs> There's not. So this is all me um, doing hard work to advocate for kids. I've been blessed to get funding through our Kiwanis for some of the injury prevention work that I do with Safe Kids. Um, but the rest of it has just been me. So I've learned how to shop. I will go on Poshmark to find discount pageant dresses because I know that that also, again, just like the crown, it catches people's attention. And in working with our blood bank, when I go every eight weeks, my blood type is B positive and I take pictures in my crown and sash, but those pictures get reshared. People see them and hopefully it inspires them to, to give back. My blood type is also B positive. It's a good life motto. It is. We were meant to be friends. <laughs> and this has been so fun. But before we let you go, with every Pathways, we like to end by asking you, what do you love most about pediatrics? I love the kids. At the heart of what we do, it really is caring for children. And then for me, as an educator, realizing that my impact is so much further by teaching our residents and that they will see more patients than I ever could. And so looking at that for how do we create our legacy and that we're changing the future by helping children each and every day. Well, Dr. Haley Nelson, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your story. Thanks so much for having me. For more pediatric pageantry, visit our website at aap.org slash podcast. That's it for today's episode. If you like Pediatrics on Call, please subscribe on your favorite podcast app and help us spread the word. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Pediatrics on Call. Pediatrics on Call is a production of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Our producer and editor is Ann Johnsos. Our audio engineer is Doug Nagel. Joe Puskars is our associate producer and Susan Martin is our executive producer. Our theme music was composed by Matthew Simonson. Join us next week when we'll take a look back at 75 years of the journal Pediatrics. We'll talk to Drs. Lewis First, Alex Kemper, and Rachel Moon all at once. I'm Dr. David Hill. And I'm Dr. Joanna Pargavalinki. Thanks for listening.